Yes, it's Tales from the Jails with John G. Sutton. Uh, before we start, don't forget, next Tuesday, the 4th of October at 6pm here, we've got live Q&As, so I hope you're all going to join in. You can ask me loads of questions, and, and, and I have no doubt that people are going to throw the usual insults. Somebody called Larry keeps saying I've got a terrible voice. Now it's cured his constipation. Quite what that means, I don't know. But Larry, see me on the sick parade tomorrow. I've got something that you might need. An aspirin taped to your head. Anyway, folks, we're going to talk today about an arsehole. I mean, a, a man called David Norris. Yeah, I lapsed into the vernacular there. Inadvertently, of course. Uh, and David Norris is the shit... I mean, the man who... <clears throat> murdered, along with his uh, so-called buddy, Gary Dobson, who murdered the young student, Stephen Lawrence, on the 22nd of April 1993 at Eltham in south-east London. They killed Stephen Lawrence, who was apparently waiting for a, a bus, and this racially motivated murder was carried out by these two I mean, I nearly said something naughty there, but basically it was David Norris and Gary Dobson. And there's a great deal of controversy around this. It took ages to actually get them to court. Apparently there was uh, corruption and uh, allegations that uh, a man called Clifford Norris, who was the father, who is the father of David Norris, was bribing police officers. Clifford Norris being a drug dealer, and who knows, perhaps even involved in what's known as the Brotherhood, yeah? Who's been braving, uh, bravely bribing police officers to uh, create an obstruction, I believe it was described as. There's also worse than that. I mean, they had undercover police officers associating with this, and one of them actually reported that he was instructed by senior officers to find information on the Lawrence family, to smear the Lawrence family. How absolutely disgraceful is that? I mean, the poor family had lost their 18-year-old, very bright, intelligent young man. He'd been murdered by idiotic racists for no apparent reason. And uh, they, they'd murdered him in cold blood and uh, managed to evade detection for quite a while, but eventually were caught due to enhanced uh, <clears throat> forensic techniques that discovered minute blood particles from Stephen Lawrence on their clothing. But uh, apparently Clifford Norris had helped to uh, obstruct this by bribing corrupt police officers, a detective sergeant, I believe, was one of them. I won't mention his name. I'm sure the shithouse knows who he is. And uh, they were subsequently tried at Crown Court and found guilty on the 3rd of January 2012 and sentenced to imprisonment at Her Majesty's pleasure, which is the equivalent of a life sentence, with recommendations of a minimum of 15 years plus in the case of Dobson and 14 years plus in the case of Norris. Now, David Norris has been in the public eye recently because he's been discovered posting selfies of himself. I'm going to show you one of the selfies that he actually sent out and it was uncovered by the Daily Mail, I believe. That is uh, David Norris. Can you see that? That's David Norris, yeah? And in Dartmoor Prison, he's sending a selfie. He looks nicely tanned, doesn't he? <clears throat> yeah. He, in David, uh, David Norris in Dartmoor Prison, that's his selfie, and he's been sending that out. Uh, he, he's fondly known by his fellow criminals as Nozza. 
and they've discovered this is this is David Norris. Noza isn't the name that comes to mind. Murdering shithouse is what comes to mind when I see the face. Yeah. Anyway, that's David Norris and uh, known as Noza in in Dartmoor prison. You know what they say, down in Dartmoor jail, where they hang him on a nail. That's the one that should hang that bastard on a nail. Anyway, he's been smuggling selfies out. So I believe it was yesterday, maybe the day before, that they conducted a search of his cell. They didn't find anything in his cell, but when they gave him a, a, a when they x-rayed him, they found that lodged in his uh, in his body was a mobile telephone i mean this is my mobile telephone yeah and he secreted that inside his body well they didn't tell you exactly in what orifice he secreted it but you've got to imagine he wouldn't swallow it i mean it's bigger than a pizza isn't it something like that yeah so what did he do with it I believe that he inserted it into his rectum, which, in the case of Noza, might not have been too painful because he is a giant arsehole, isn't he? Yeah. Destroying a, a life of a young man who just wanted to, to, to be educated. They've named, they've named a... A wing at the University of Reading after Stephen Lawrence, and rightly so. Disgraceful. Anyway, apparently David Norris is applying for parole. I'm sure that you and I and all right-thinking people in the United Kingdom wish David Norris all the best. May he receive a fair and un determined hearing you know not predetermined so that he can go there and present his case why he should be allowed to step free into society again eh? because that's what we're short of folks murdering shit houses that ram telephones up their ass anyway enough of my prejudice i'm not going to sing to you it's another one of those brilliant poems by john g sutton so before I lapse into this, let me tell you, don't forget, the 4th of October here at 6pm, we'll be doing the uh, Q&As. So get your insults ready. I'm sure Larry is polishing his, looking up his vocabulary, searching for the right words hmm, to insult John G. Sutton. I don't mind. I've had far worse things thrown at me. This is uh, a poem I wrote, which is kind of a, a, jo a jolly kind of thing. Uh, it's a bit of a social comment. I recently watched uh, John Cooper Clark. I particularly like John Cooper Clark's work. I'm not going to read any because he never reads any of mine. So John Cooper Clark wrote a poem called Bongo's Trousers. I recently heard that on YouTube. Have a look that up. It's reasonably amusing. And uh, it deals with uh, the issues of Bono, I believe his name is, uh, who was attending the G20 conference on, on climate change. He's full of his own shit, that bastard, isn't he? Bongo, yeah. Anyway, here we have it. It's called The Man in the Vest. Something of a social comment on, on the way our society is going, and particularly the entertainment industry. As, as our heroes are being portrayed, not as they once were. This is called The Man in the Vest. John Wayne, he wore a Stetson as he tamed the tough Wild West. But now our movie heroes wears a filthy sweat-stained vest. We've seen him die hard, deadly, with a fast-repeating gun. As he annihilates the terrorists and waggles his cute little bum. In Armageddon, there it was, oiled and covered in dirt. As Action Man, personified, 
Save the world without a shirt. Clark Gable, Bogey, where are you? Clean suited, you looked the part. Taking on the bad guys, you stole the ladies' hearts. Now all we have is filth and grunge, car mechanics acting tough. Products of someone's fantasy. Do they like a bit of rough? Or oh, bring back our screen heroes. Return them if you can. They can't all have gone with the wind if you really give a damn. The Man in the Vest by John G. Sutton. 4th of October, don't forget, here, Tuesday, 6 pm. Q&As, we'll speak again. Tales from the Jails.